Welcome to Fun Uber Games, a channel where you can win money and learn ways to make money. So today is our uh, stock market game. And it's not really a game, it's actually real money, but to me it's kind of a game. I look at it as a game. I enjoy it. And um, let's look at this is our portfolio. It's, it's open right now. I already logged in. So we bought Apple stock last time. We bought 25 shares. And we actually put a purchase order or a limit order for another 25 shares, but that didn't go through because I put it for a lower price. So if you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. And the price didn't come down to, the, to that point, so that trade didn't go through. So we only have the 25 shares. And um, as you can see, the um, today we're down $3.75. And, and the market value is 35.79. So our total gain is negative. So we lost $16.87. That includes today's loss. There's also the fee in there. So we the stock actually went down probably what it, what I can't remember what the fee was. Was it six dollars? Um, if it was six dollars, the fee. The stock went down ten dollars and eighty-seven cents. <clears throat> but buying stock is, or buying investments is a long-term thing. And I've had many, many friends who ask me for advice, and I help them get started, and they they never last. Very rarely they they can do it because the stock goes down. They put a thousand dollars in the stock is $900 after three months, and then they sell it because they can't stand ups and downs. They never think they're going to get their money back. But it's a long-term thing. It, the $100,000 I put in, a lot, of the, a lot of the investments I made with that, it took me years and years to build up. And let me know. I can show you another investment account where I have investments in there for many, many years, and you can see um, how it performed. There's, because there's no get-rich-quick scheme. It, you're never going to time the market perfectly. Nobody can do it. You, you may be able to identify a stock that's undervalued, and you buy it. You might have to wait a few weeks, a few months, a few years. There's no get-rich-quick schemes. It's impossible. And if anybody tells you there are, they're just trying to make money off of you. So today I want to buy an ETF. An ETF is an exchange traded fund. And I want to buy the spiders, SPY. People call it spiders. That's just um it's the S P five hundred. It tracks the S P five hundred. So it's about ten percent of the S P five hundred. So it's trading at two hundred and thirty-five dollars. And we're gonna go ahead and buy it. Because I like to have spiders in my portfolio, and we'll I'll explain spiders a little more. <clears throat> and this calculator is a handy tool. So we, let's get an even amount. So I want to put ten thousand dollars into spiders. So ten thousand dollars, and it says to per share price currently is at two thirty five, spot four nine five. So it says I can uh, buy 42.46 shares. Obviously, I, I have to buy a round number if, for $10,000. So I'm going to buy 42 shares because there's going to be fees. So it's going to be roughly $10,000 in spiders. And I'm going to do the market. And I'll explain why it doesn't really matter for this particular trade to do the market. So I'll preview the trade. So it's going to cost me... It's a $7 commission, and it'll cost me 90, almost $9,900. So if I bought one more share, it would put me over 10000 But either one, that's pretty close to 10000 So I'm going to place the order, and it's going to execute immediately. In a split second, it's going to execute. I'll place the order. Your order was entered during market hours, because we're currently in market hours. And then that doesn't mean it... it 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 executed, or somebody per bought the other side of the trade. That just means it went through. But I know it did go. It did get 
um, board on the other side. Because as you can see, it's in my account already. So that means the, the, the trade went through. So I, I own spiders. And you can see, of course, I'm down to start because of really the, the, the fee that was involved in a small timing difference. And maybe the, the, I lost a penny in the stock price. So now I own Apple and spiders. So my portfolio has these two and 86,000 of cash. So I'm, om I'm pretty much at my 100,000 I originally started with. But over time, that's going to go up or down. So I, I purchased the spiders. Now let's just talk about spiders a little. And you could do all this stuff on your own. Uh, E-Trade gives you a lot of info. But I'm going to show you some of the stuff I look at and um, just show you different things. One thing I did want to talk about So when you go to buy stock, um, it, it gives you the share price, what it's currently trading at, and then the bid ask price. And the bid, and I talked about this last video. So the bid the ask is relatively the same. It's 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 one penny off. Now if the stock costs ten cents, then one penny is ten percent of the value of the stock. That's could make a difference. So you might want to not put in the market order. But since it's one cent off of $235, it's it's pretty much insignificant. So why is it so close to bid ask? Because the closer the bid ask, and, and people call that the spread, so the closer the spread, the more liquid the security is. So what does that mean? What does liquid mean? The, the definition of liquid is cash. So the most liquid asset you can get is cash, because that is what liquid is, cash. So the most, and then the most, if a stock was illiquid, I-L-L-I, -L -L -I, liquid, illiquid, that means it would probably have a, a larger spread. Like the bid and the ask might have, it might be, $10, $20 apart, or maybe th several thousand dollars apart. So to give you an example, um, a really large bid ask, you know, would it be on E-Trade, of course, uh, would be uh, real estate. So uh, the bid is what people want to want to buy that. So if somebody was wanted to buy my house, for instance, and Say that I'm just making numbers up, but say my house I I put in the market for a hundred thousand dollars. That's the ask. They may bid eighty thousand dollars because they're not they don't want they want to pay as little as possible. So the bid ask is twenty thousand the spread is twenty thousand dollars. So the so when it's a really large spread, it's an illiquid asset. And, and when it's a liquid, it just generally means that less people want to buy it, it or it's harder, it's harder to, to convert into cash. So real estate is, is considered a liquid asset. And uh, there's other things that are illiquid, maybe like antiques. It's just not as easy to find someone willing to buy it. And it's not, um, there's, there's less of a market out there. So just a little terminology for you to know. So if you ever hear the terms on Bloomberg, it's the spreads are tight or the wide spreads. They're talking about kind of the bid ask or if they mention liquidity, illiquidity. That's what all this stuff means. So the more you look at this stuff, the more it'll make sense and the more you hear it. So the, the S&P 500, investopedia.com is a great website because it explains things really well so you could look there or really anywhere but i mean the s p 500 it, it even says it's kind of like the benchmark of of the performance of the of, of the u.s equities or u.s stocks it's kind of like the benchmark of the the u.s economy 
because it's it's 500 large cap, as you can see, large cap stocks. Large cap means the the the, um, the value of the company according to the stock market is 10 billion dollars or more. So it's 500 of of the largest companies in the United States. So it's it's a pretty safe investment. It's not. It's not like buying treasury bonds, which is no risk. There's, of course, risk in here because we've seen stock markets go down. But if you're in, new to the market, I would recommend to buy an ETF like this or a mutual fund because it's less risky than buying an individual stock. But if you're looking for very little risk, then you probably shouldn't go, you shouldn't buy stocks. And you can look inside the portfolio of the spiders. And this is not the portfolio of the S&P 500. This is the portfolio of the ETF, This the one that I bought, the SPY ETF. So this is good for you to know what you're buying into. Because, I'm, because this ETF, like there's people who actually manage this particular fund. And they own Apple stock, 3.7% of their portfolio is Apple stock. They own Microsoft stock. This is their top 10. Really large, safe companies. So, so when you buy something like a mutual fund, look into the portfolio because you may not, you, some port, mutual funds, ETFs, don't even hold stock. They just hold, um, I mean, I don't want to get into too much detail. They might hold contracts or they may reference stock. So it's much safer when you actually buy into something that has an actual asset in it than buying something where there's no asset. So if the, if, if the um, something went wrong, like with this particular ETF, they have some, they have real assets they could sell to make me whole, me being the, uh, the owner of this part of this ETF. And ETFs are like, are, are fairly new. Um, they've really taken over what mutual funds used to be. They're still mutual funds, but mutual funds generally you, you can't buy them like a stock. You could you could only buy them at the close of business day. And generally the fees are higher because um, there's people who manage mutual funds as well. So you have to pay, you're paying for those people their time to buy the, buy whatever is in the portfolio. And this is the portfolio here. ETFs are traded like a stock. So you could buy and sell an ETF like a stock anytime you want. You don't have to wait to the end of the business trading day. And of course there's fees involved because there's people who have to manage this ETF. So you're paying these experts to do what we normal people can't do. Because I, I theoretically can buy Apple stock, Microsoft stock, I could buy all this stock. But, but these people are experts, and they are supposed to know when to buy and what to buy. In this particular case, they're just mimicking the S&P 500. So it, it's not as much uh, thinking involved as, as maybe a normal ETF or mutual fund. And you could really delve into all, all these tabs to see what others say or to see ratings, and there's a lot of analysis we get into. And please leave in the comments if you have any questions about this. And something I'm going to leave in the com in the uh, uh, in the description. It it's related to the bid ask I mentioned earlier. So if if there's a really large bid ask then there's opportunity to make money. So you, there's only one cent and there's very little room to make money. So you're not gonna make money, there's, no, there's not a difference. But the larger the bid ask, 
the more chance you have to really take advantage. For example, we'll go back to real estate because it makes sense. So if I can find a home for $100,000 and then turn around, just make maybe spend 5000 on some repairs and fix it up and sell for $150,000, that, that can happen. People do that all the time. They buy real estate and they sell it for a much higher price. Sometimes Some people don't even do anything to the house. They just buy it because they find someone who really needs to get out of their home and then they sell it. There's a lot of risk involved with that, but you can do that. You could take advantage of those differences if there's a large bid ask. And um, something people might find interesting here, when there's a really, like, when there's a gap in, in the pricing, it's called arbitrage. And there's a website, and if you familiar with the markets and you follow things, you would know this as well, but there's a website to, to make it very user-friendly where their stock, so for example, the first one, let's just take the first one. It says last price $31. So this stock, SWI, is trading at $31. And there's a merger, a potential merger, you see the pending merger? with another company. So when that company acquires SWI, they're going to buy it for $60 a share. So if you own SWI, you automatically get paid $60 for your for each share of stock you own. Now, of course, this particular merger was has, has been going on for almost a year and a half now. So this is not perfect. If this, if this, everybody can take advantage of this, everybody would be buying this stock. There's a lot of like things that need to happen for the merger to go through, and of course, of course, mergers don't always go through. So if you, if you know of a potential merger, you may be able to take advantage of this arbitrage opportunity. But you may have to wait a really long time for the merger to go through, or the merger may not go through a million things could happen this is just an interesting website and i'll leave it in the description um where you can maybe make make a profit off of a, a merger but if you have any questions about this or about the um the trading leave a comment and let me know if you have any questions or or any stock suggestions maybe i'll buy that stock um Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.